Good afternoon. Welcome to Living Mosaic, a project of the Spark of Humanity Network. Living Mosaic is designed or hoped to be a conversation about the concept that we of the Spark of Humanity Network have that to the world's pain, denial, distress, agony, fear, their heartbreak, there is a solution. And we are envisioning that solution in the order of a living mosaic, living and evolving mosaic, dancing mosaic even, in which we are each a unique and essential bit. So what we are hoping to do, planning to do, doing is developing a conversation about whether that idea resonates and how we might find our niche within the mosaic. How, how do we support each other? How do we dare ourselves and support each other in becoming the unique bit of it that we need to be because we're each unique and we each have unique gifts to offer and we are each essential. This afternoon we'll be talking about the concept of trouble which flows from the session two weeks ago, which is about gratitude. The idea around the trouble, if you read the little squib we sent out with the email, um, is that rather than being avoided, that it can be received as an instrument of our formation, our developing us, our forming us so that we may become the unique and essential bits of the mosaic we can be. We are designed to be. We need to be in order for the solution to emerge. There's a story that I, I'm going to start off with, and some of you may know it, because it's one of my favorite stories. One morning, a man was walking to town. This was back in the days when people walked to town. And he went by a young boy furiously shoveling away at this huge pile of manure. You know, well, that's interesting, and I wonder why he's doing that. But he had to go to town, so he went to town. And on his way back in the evening, the kid was still there, still shoveling. And so he stopped and said, so, young man, I don't get it. Why are you shoveling away at this huge pile of manure? And the youngster looked up at him with great hope and beaming face, said, a pile of manure this big, there's got to be a pony in here somewhere. And that's the basic, that's the good story. The, it's not the basic premise, but it's the idea that there is always a gift in any trouble. If we are willing to look for it, and sometimes we do need to dig through a pile of fecal matter or whatever in order to find it, but to find that gift, to receive it as a gift, and then to unwrap it and unpack it and put it to use, that's of course a challenge, but to understand that in every trouble that we experience, there is some gift. And it may be come from something that we can recognize, sort of like almost external that comes through the trouble, or perhaps it's simply and acutely the change that is made within ourselves, within our own perceptions, as we are willing to encounter that trouble and not duck and to receive it and to allow it to work on us, essentially. Because it, it forms us. I know we tend to feel that we're fully formed. We're, we're you know, just the way we are, and this is the way we are, and this is the way we are going to be, and this is the way maybe we're even meant to be. The fact is, no. We're not. We're each pliable 
or designed to be pliable. We may be resisting it, but at our best, we are accepting the process of being molded and stretched and formed in order to become what the, the gem, the piece of shell, the sparkle of glass, the pebble, that we need to be in order to help with the formation of the mosaic, which is the solution. And that's not easy, and I, I have, we have, a, something to offer that can help in that process. Um, I have a story from my own experience that may be helpful or may not. Um, I suffered a traumatic brain injury 10 years ago. And after, when I went into rehab for it, brain rehab, I called it, I learned that concussions, traumatic brain injuries, are cumulative. If you have enough of them, eventually you end up not being able to talk so well. And that you may notice that happening with me at times. They're cumulative, and but the neurons, neuroplasticity, they're they're always you're always susceptible to being rewired if you allow yourself to be. And as I was lying on the couch for I forget two or three months with two compression fractures and a brain that felt like under scrambled scrambled eggs but underdone, um, I realized that I was not in control. I was not in charge and that I would never go back to the way I was. My life would never go back to the way it was. And so, OK, have at it, neuroplasticity. Have at it, you know, whatever, um, the creative power of the universe. However we want to think about it, the, the dynamic of evolution, have at it and make me into something useful or as useful as I can be. So, and at least now I feel, I'm certainly having more fun than I was before the traumatic brain injury, so, and here we are. So that's just one very personal, very stark example to be approaching something that was in fact traumatic. But it's also, a, it's an adventure because when we allow ourselves to be drawn into the process of our formation, the process of our being molded, we don't know what's going to happen. And we're not in charge if we allow ourselves to not be in charge, if we have practice at not being in charge. And we're being formed as something that we probably don't have words for and we maybe can't imagine. And it's a trusting. It's a, it's a trusting, it's a faith in the process of molding, of creating, of becoming, and just trusting that which brings the lilacs to bud and blossom in the spring can work through us, will work through us, wants to work through us, if we can get our judgments, our self-pity, our ideas, our bright ideas out of the way. So how do we do that and what can help us? If we're willing, of course, because, um, you know, there's willingness is always required. We can stop any natural process once we've reached our physical maturity, or at least growth. Um, we can stop any of our internal psychic, spiritual, emotional, processes pretty much by our thoughts, our intentions, how we hold it, our attitudes. And so if we are willing, if we've learned to trust that which moves, that which grows, that which fuels evolution, if we've learned to trust that, if we or if we're willing to practice trusting that and think that's maybe more interesting 
and more creative and more satisfying than are holding on to our ideas and how we think things should be and the way things were 20 years ago and why aren't they that way anymore. If we're willing to practice trusting that process gently, bit by bit, nibble by nibble, trusting that process, then life, that which forms the mosaic, that which is the, the medium in which all us little pieces, are, us little unique essential pieces of the mosaic are embedded, then that begins to be able to work through us and to draw us into our place in the mosaic, which is truly the only place we're comfortable because we cannot be truly profoundly comfortable where we're not meant to be, where we're not when we're not within our place or on our way to our niche within the mosaic. So thinking about this brings me back to the discussion of the Spark of Humanity project, of which Living Mosaic is a, is a project within the project, I suppose. The Spark of Humanity project is based on the understanding that there is a spark of humanity within each one of us. You can call it something besides humanity if that works, but there is a spark within each one of us, and those sparks cannot be destroyed or corrupted. They may be defended, and they usually are, because we don't really get it that they can't be destroyed or corrupted or put out of existence. They can be defended, they can be distorted, they can get really out of whack, they can be baffled. The idea is that the, it starts with the bafflement. When we come out of the nice, dark, warm, safe feeling place where we were gestated, with all the bright lights and those big beings, there's something in us which is saying, huh, what do I do? How do I stay safe? How do I be comfortable in this environment? Baffle, 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 I don't know how to do it. And so we start figuring out how to be safe. If I smile, they'll smile back and they'll be nice. If I cry, they'll change my diapers and you know feed me, but that may or may not be enough so the the dist and some of the behavior that we develop in order to calm our to get beyond the bafflement is distorting. It's we get an idea about if I do this, this will always be the result. And you and I know that doesn't work. It's a good theory for a while, but it doesn't work. And then that is painful because it's contrary to our true nature, and because it's painful, we develop defenses defenses against our own awareness, which can be called denial, and defenses against other people getting too close, because if they get too close, we may react in a way that's not helpful, that gets us bad consequences. So, but if we connect our spark with the other person's spark, that strengthens both sparks, and it seems to erode the defenses. And because our defenses are eroded, we become aware of our bafflement, and we are no longer baffled so much because we realize that the spark, which we've been defending, cannot be extinguished, it cannot be corrupted. So once we begin to get that into our systems, we can start letting go of the distortions. So we're not in so much pain because we're not so distorted. And because we're not in so much pain, we can start letting go of the defenses. Okay, that's long about how this gets us to deal with trouble. When you claim your spark, get familiar with your spark, and, and through your spark, allow your awareness to be drawn to the spark in someone else and connect with and affirm their spark. Your spark is 
strengthened, which means your defenses are eroded and your bafflement is clarified and your distortions are released, which renders you more susceptible, more available to the mosaic, which is living. So I think of it as the mosaic is breathing, it's inhaling. It's wanting to inhale us all into our niches because the mosaic wants to be complete. The mosaic of the solution, the living mosaic of the solution to the world problems. So as you practice claiming your spark, then you, the things in you, the, the fear, because when you're in trouble, there's a lot of fear. There's mostly fear, isn't there? There can be pain. Often there's self-pity, oceans of self-pity. Judgment, it's all their blame, it's all their fault. Shame, I did it to myself. All these things that get in the way, that clog up the ability, our ability to be drawn into the living mosaic of the solution. So, so that's, and that is where we find our way through trouble. Let me sneeze here. <coughs> Thank you. Excuse me. Um, that that joining the process of of the mosaic is essentially maybe essentially can be the pony within the manure pile. It's to, because as we find ourselves becoming more who we are created to be, who we are by nature, who our essence, because the bits of the mosaic are essential, both ways, totally necessary, and they're of the essence and unique. So it's a, it's a process of becoming who we truly are. And the trouble, the gift of trouble, is that it can shatter our preconceptions break up our prejudices, put us in a place like I was on the couch after my brain injury with my compression fractures. Um, so sort of like, I give up, I give up, whatever. Let me just participate. You know, I just, I just want to be, you know, find me, give me a purpose, help me be most effective in what I can do, guide me to what I can best do. And so the trouble has the, has the constructive byproduct, or that may be its primary product, of putting us in enough confusion, pain, distress, distress, like the world, distress so that we are willing to give up the way we've done things, we're willing, we're sort of broken out of our accustomed way of seeing things, our perceptions. It's we're open to a paradigm shift, as we used to say back in the 60s, whenever we said it. Um, and we become available. It's sort of like, a, I don't know my, my etymology well enough, but you know, it's like, it's like a, it's not quite perhaps like a caterpillar becoming a butterfly, but it's like a, you know, a, a daffodil springing out of its, growing out of its bud. It's, it's being able to come into where we need to, where we, where we most happily are. And this is, we can always greet trouble in this light. We can, it's, and it's a good practice because when I see trouble coming, this is hypothetical, let's hope I can always do it and better and better. But when I begin to perceive that I'm in trouble, that I'm approaching trouble or trouble's approaching me, 
then I, when I say, oh, okay, uh, thank you. Um, there's something here for me. There's something for me to learn. But there's something for me to become. There's some new or reconfigured aspect of myself. There's something, there's a freshness here, there's a newness here when I face the trouble and trust that I will be guided through it, knowing, trusting, knowing that it is an instrument, custom crafted instrument of my formation. My formation as a pebble or a gem or a piece of broken mirror or whatever in this mosaic. So it's a, it's a shift in attitude so that we don't try to avoid it. Many of us have discovered that when, in fact, that may be the story of humanity, when we try to avoid trouble, when we want to avoid it, uh, project it onto somebody else, when we're not present to it, denying it, or running away from it, or categorizing it, or calling it names, or blaming it on somebody else. Of course, it's always somebody else. Or, or also blaming it on ourselves. You know, the 9-11 was entirely my fault because of, you know, because I didn't, whatever. Um, I didn't march wherever I should have marched. Um, you know, when, when we let go of all that mental pollution, all that garbage that clutters up our heads and our attitudes and allow ourselves to be open to what is and to receive what is with a spirit of acceptance, um, curiosity. Curiosity is very good. It really is. Gratitude, perhaps. And be willing to be led by it in how we should proceed the best, the most effective, the most authentic, the truest, the way that leads us toward our place within the living mosaic of the solution to the world's problems, to, or at least this planet, yeah, this planet's problems. So I've, we've got about a minute and a half, and I'm going to be silent. And if you've got a question and you beam it to me, um, or a comment, we'll hope I pick it up. And I may get an idea from somewhere. So hold on, we'll be back in a, less than a minute. Okay, so it's always appropriate to be thanking people. Thanking Danielle O'Hallisey, who writes little squibs to go out by the emails to all of you who are on our email list, which will be put on your screen before it goes up on YouTube by Zach or one of the good people here at ORCA. So thank you also to the people at orcamedia.net on in River Community Access here in Montpelier, Vermont. And thank you also to Rose Fisher, who is the administrator for this whole thing, without whom there would not be and could not be. So have a good couple of weeks. I think we're talking about work next time. And may you enjoy the season. Take care. <laughs>